Hi, I'm Eric from WordStream, and welcome back to the WordStream YouTube channel. In our previous video, we talked about the basics of doing a SWOT analysis. And to recap, for those of you who may have missed the first one, SWOT stands for Strengths, Weaknesses, Opportunities, and Threats. It's a great analysis to do if you're looking to bring a new product to market, or a new task to bear, a new initiative, or a new feature out there. And you examine the company and the product itself through the prism of strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Now let's try to get into the nitty gritty. How do you go about putting together a brainstorming session that's actually gonna bring about success at the end of the SWOT process? So the beginning of any brainstorming session usually starts with an icebreaker. So when I've facilitated brainstorming sessions, I usually bring in a bag full of candy. Nothing gets the creative juices flowing like good you know, sugar, I guess. So candy, cookies, whatever it is that's somewhat social, people can be unwrapping, they can be talking about it, it can sort of get their creative juices flowing, is a good thing. You've got your team all squared away, you got them all jammed up on candy, and you've already got the ice broken. But you also have to determine which person's gonna have a pen in their hand. Now you can do it with a whiteboard, you can do it on a computer. Ideally that computer's displaying on a screen someplace, so there's transparency all around. But you have to have somebody taking notes on all of these ideas. Many times, a SWOT analysis is done in the form of a four-quadrant square, and you can put strengths in one corner, weaknesses on the bottom, opportunities on the opposite corner of strengths, and threats on the bottom across from weaknesses. But it doesn't matter how you structure it, as long as you have somebody writing down those ideas, and they are in full view of everybody in the process, it's gonna help you really gather a SWOT analysis that you can take away from with clear action items at the end. Whatever it is the initiative that you're trying to do, make sure everyone has you know, a pretty decent understanding over what it is you're trying to achieve. Remember, as you learned in the previous video, you do a SWOT analysis through the prism of the thing you're looking to do, the initiative you're looking to roll out, the product you're looking to bring to market, the feature that you're looking to add. You have to always think about the SWOT through what those things you're trying to achieve, so make sure everybody in the room is aware of the thing you're looking to do. Another important thing to, to keep in mind is keeping it cross-functional. Make sure you have at least one, sometimes two representatives of each one of those departments in the room with you so you can have a much more well-balanced and fully prismatic view of the task you're looking to, to achieve. And then when you get into the discussion, you're gonna have at least one uh, person for every department and one voice in the room for each so you know that you have a much more well-rounded look at the task at hand. Now let's talk about strengths. What is a strength? Well, you have to look inwardly a little bit. You have to say to yourself, my gosh, what is it we are really good at? I mean, not just individually, but also as an as a, uh, organization or as a team uh, within the prism or through the lens of accomplishing that task. Now, strengths can be anything, quite frankly. It can be the most important things you do as a group, or even down to the minutia, the smallest things that really make a difference, make an impact on your customers. Think about those things as you're going through strengths, and as I mentioned in the previous video, strengths are often the, the, the thumbs ups, the, the, the happy things, the attaboys, the pats on the back. The, it's even easier to talk about the good stuff. So probably, you know, you, you know the expression, uh, do you wanna hear the good news first or the bad news? With a brainstorming session, always start with the good news. Start with strengths because it gives you a, a level playing field to sit upon, everybody sort of gets to, to a level of agreement, and there's smiles all around before you get to the next section of this SWOT analysis, weaknesses. What are the things that you're not so good at? Well, using the same template, using the same framework as we talked about with strengths, think about the stuff that, I don't know, the sort of the polar opposite, the Wario land version of the strengths that you had talked about in the previous section. What are the things that you guys could probably do a better job of on your team, in your company, or in your organization? Sometimes you gotta say the quiet part loud and weaknesses is one of those areas with which you can do that. Opportunities, I think probably my favorite part about a SWOT analysis, why? Because opportunities are all about what happens next. It's what you see in the distance. What could be the thing that you guys can accomplish with this new product that you're rolling out or this new feature that you're adding or this new initiative that your company is embarking upon. Opportunities are places for growth and green fields for you to run straight into. That's sort of the mindset when you think about opportunities. And if you compiled a really good cross-functional team 
and you got those people all hopped up on candy and they're already talking, they're already speaking with in full voice, with clarity and with honesty, those opportunities are gonna be flowing because you're now back to the good part of the conversation. This is the good news section once again. It's a little aspirational to be sure. You can't always guarantee that these things are gonna happen, but opportunities are a really good way to sort of bring the discussion back from the negative of weaknesses back to the positive of opportunities. And now the T, the, um, I don't know, ending back on the bad news portion of the SWOT analyses, threats. But that's the thing, it doesn't always have to be bad news. Because the thing about opportunities is these are things that could happen in the future that could be good, whereas threats are things that could happen in the future that could be bad. But through the purposes of good planning, uh, proper organizational plan, like a SWOT analysis, you can help hopefully avoid those threats. So think about your threats in the exact same way as you thought about opportunities, except with a much more introspective, where could this go wrong? And once you get all of that stuff well put together, then you start analyzing the results of your SWOT analysis. Make sure you got everybody's ideas written down and on paper. Now, if somebody had just been writing these things down on a whiteboard, that either that person or somebody else in the room now has to take notes off the whiteboard and make sure everything is written down in the form of action items or at the very least uh, categorized into what they were, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Once all of that is now compiled, make sure you queue up, I mean literally the first thing after you get back to your desk, queue up an email and send all of this stuff around to all of the participants in your SWOT analysis. Letting this reveal itself out to everybody who was involved in the process is gonna help everybody internalize these things, think about the results of the SWOT analysis, and help take this thing moving forward in order to make your product, your task, your initiative successful. Once everybody reads that email with all those action items, what do you do next? Well, ideally, you're gonna embark upon your regular process of bringing this initiative out, getting this product out to market. Using this analysis and having internalized all of this information is ideally gonna help you accomplish the task better than it was before. But if you gotta schedule a follow-up, do that. Sometimes a SWOT analysis results in the revelations of certain threats that you didn't even know was a thing. If you've got a, compiled a good enough cross-functional team, you may have found out about something from the finance team that the people in the marketing team never even knew. So perhaps coordinate another cross-functional team meeting. Perhaps coordinate another SWOT analysis to, to use a Silicon Valley word, double-click on the thing you discovered in the original SWOT analysis to help solve those problems. But never lose sight on the task at hand. You're trying to do something. That was the whole point of compiling all these this data and bringing all these people into the room to do a SWOT analysis. You want to get that product out, get that initiative done, get that task completed. Think about that and move forward with that SWOT analysis, keeping in mind that there may be an exit ramp someplace else that you can always come back to at some point down the road. If you didn't catch our first video on SWOT analyses, click the link and go back. Watch that first video where we talk a little bit about what it is and how it works. And then, of course, re-watch this video to learn how to accomplish it. I'm Eric from WordStream. Thanks so much for watching the WordStream YouTube channel. And make sure you click like and subscribe so you can catch more of this amazing content that we're putting out every single week. Thanks for watching.